Hey everybody, Tony Beers here again, and I'm joined by Jason Case, Jay, and Russ. And this is Movie Grades, and in this episode of Movie Grades, we're going to be talking about Rogue One, a Star Wars story. What did you guys like about it? We'll start with well, Jason. I liked it because in a lot of ways, it was Star Wars, but it was a different take. I mean, because we have these gaps in between episodes. And it, it's kind of interesting to see what happened in that time frame. What goes on, who was in the Rebellion, right. and how they got the Death Star plans to begin with. I, I thought I found that really interesting. Russell? Awesome. In my case, what I basically liked about it was mostly the second half, admittedly. Basically, as Jason was saying, it's about where the rebellion starts. I mean, I agree with that. I see it more as when the Empire realizes that they've actually got a problem on their hands, where up to that point, like, they figure there were some remnants of the, uh, of the Republic before that, but it's not until this point where they realize, okay, we have a problem, and it is growing. So mm -hmm. I had to give them a lot of credit for that. What I also liked was they took some ideas from some concepts that were never initially used, such as Vader Castle, which was an unused concept from Empire Strikes Back, yeah. and they put it in this one, and they actually linked it to the Revenge of the Sith by putting his fortress on Mustafar, which was kind of cool. And for those of you who, like myself, absolutely despise C-3PO, we got the <laughs> definitive version of what he should be called K-2SO in this movie, and and he was probably the runaway hit character of the movie, not to mention a blind Jedi and his companion. Well, the... technically he wasn't a Jedi. Okay, yeah. they're essentially the, the highlights of the movie, and he was played by Donnie Yen. Do not ask me what his name was, I can't remember it, but essentially... Shiro Thank you. Ime. But essentially it was those three characters, and they made the experience. Actually, K2 reminded me of Ross. Oh, really? <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's probably why you like him, Russ. Okay, Jason? Or Jay? Thank this you. one's Jason, that Jay. one's Jay. <laughs> Let me talk about the music. The music they used, there was a music they used from the original trilogy, which fit in very well with the movie, even though it wasn't John Williams. It was this new guy, Michael, I can't think of his name, last name, but job well done with the score of this movie. And the movie felt like it took place in the 70s. K2SO was, he's my new favorite droid besides R2-D2, which R2-D2 and C-3PO were in the movie. Mm -hmm. And what I really liked is they took elements from, you know, the prequels and the Rebel show in the movie. Actually, uh, General Sandula was actually mentioned on one of the loudspeakers, and Chopper was actually in the movie. Mm -hmm. So that was really... So was the ghost. So was the ghost in the when they had the battle scene. So that was really well done. How they incorporated stuff from the show, and a lot of uh, ships that we see at the episode at the end of uh, actually episode five. But they had the new U wings were very well done in the movie, and then they had the big uh, frigate ship that was done in those small like egg shaped ships. I don't know the name, but those if you if you saw the end of episode five, those are actually in that scene. So it was cool seeing those Tetrut Imwe and and Baze Malbus, and those are my two favorite characters besides you know K two S O because it, it was cool seeing the Imperial droid that was reprogrammed. Mm -hmm. And of course Brody, I know Brody Rook. It was he was interesting because um, he was that Imperial pilot, but he really didn't have a huge backstory. So of those, he would probably be the fourth character I would like. Who else? I mean, I like I like that they brought back the same actor and actress who played Bail Organa mm -hmm. and and Mom Mothra, Mom Mothma. Mm -hmm. in this movie from the prequel trilogy. So that was cool seeing them again. Mm -hmm. I think that's all. That's, that's about it. On to you, Tony. Yeah. Um, I think out of the four of us, I'm, I'm probably the one <laughs> that liked it the least. But I did like certain aspects of it. We're all agreeing that K2SO is the standout character, I believe. Well, he's yes. the breakout. Break he was up. by far the best. Oh, yeah. Break up yeah, he, he has a great personality. He has great one-liners and stuff like that. And spoiler, 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 every single person dies in this movie. He was the one that I cared the most about. When he died first, that was the one that I almost teared up at. But And I, I love the action. Like Russell mentioned, the last third of this movie I thought was really good. You know, I like seeing Vader again, of course. Uh, I, I loved and hate what he did at the very end in this movie. I, it was a great action scene, but I had a little problem with yeah. it. Getting into that. Now on to what we didn't like. Uh, so, I mean, Jason? I 
I probably like this movie a little bit more than any of you guys did. I mean, yeah. But I mean, some of the things that I I did I talk to you about a little bit, it jumped around a little bit. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, I, I think sometimes yeah. if you're not a Star Wars fan, like a general person, they're going to be lost a little bit about what's kind of going on because mm -hmm. they were jumping from planet to planet to yeah. planet to planet, and it was going real fast. Yeah. Um, that was really. Um, one of the major things I thought was kind of wrong with it. Let's move on to one of the biggest problems in the movie. Let's talk about Tarkin and Leia with the CGI. Yes. Let's let's talk about <laughs> this. Right. Okay, let's Because I know you guys had the most problem with it. I didn't have as much problem with it as you. Obviously, in the time frame, they had to have him in there. There were other ways they could have done yeah. it. Yeah. Either a hologram well, or just see his reflection I'm not in the window. I'm not disagreeing with you on that. And him and I were talking about this. Yeah. The guy that played him, they could have done some makeup job on it. Here's the gist. They look like a video game character in the modern age of in a movie with real people yeah. it doesn't look good here's my beef with it disney has the marvel licensing they did robert downey jr in civil war and they did michael douglas in ant-man and they look spectacular how come disney couldn't give lucas films ability to do peter cushing and carrie fisher justice to their characters in this movie my, let me <laughs> I, I know the, this was the biggest problem for you guys, but let me throw this out there to you, okay? I knew it was CG. I mean, obvious for obvious reasons. When I was sitting there watching it, I think my first reaction was, whoa, oh, that's Moth Tarkin. You yeah. know what I mean? It wasn't like, I didn't look at, oh, well, that's fake. You know, yeah. I didn't think of it that way. I'm just like, oh, it's cool. They put him in there. I can see where you guys are coming from on that point of view, but for me, when I'm watching, I'm like, being a fan of Star Wars, I'm like, oh, look, it's Moth Tarkin, you know, oh, look, because yeah. in, in all actuality, what I thought was going to happen at the end, that they would just show Leia standing there and she wouldn't turn around. Yeah. That I thought would, it would just be a person uh, in the uh, white, because yeah, you knew who it was. Yeah. Right. And when she turned around, I'm like, like, whoa, what? okay. I mean, I didn't think, oh, that's fake. That wasn't the first thing. I, I was like... Oh, it's cool. They put it in there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's how I looked at it as, yeah, I don't think it was all perfect. I really don't. But for me as a fan of Star Wars to have that in there, I was like, oh, that's cool. Because I wasn't expecting it. Oh, yeah. See, it was the back of her and she just could have said hope. Exactly. And that, and that was it. I agree with you, but... I think uh, for me, though, you said you didn't like Leia. You thought well, Leia was worse than Tarkin. I did. Yes. I feel like she was worse than... Than him and what 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 bothers me the most at the time, uh, Carrie Fisher was still alive and I'm very thankful when they're moving forward we will not see a CGI yeah, version because yeah. that was news that was revealed. Well, she had she gave them their blessing. I know well, at the time it. yes yes at the time but maybe she realized when she saw the movie maybe uh, it wasn't <laughs> wasn't the greatest thing. Uh, let. Russ, let's see your thoughts on the whole CJ since you've been quiet this whole time. Oh my God! For once to hear that from Jay. Well, okay. <laughs> Number one, I felt like this movie was done by two different directors. Mm. The first half and the second half, it's like completely different. The first half was so drawn out and dull to me. I, it was so confusing. I had no idea what was going on and I truthfully didn't even care. The second half was where all the action was. Now, here's the interesting thing actually. And I remember people s saying on Facebook, Oh my God, this movie is so great. This is what The Force Awakens should have been. So I saw that and I'm like, uh-oh, this is going to be the moment where fans are going to kill this again for me. So I, I hate to say I went with some hesitation. Well, the funny thing is, what everyone was complaining about in The Force Awakens, they did it in this movie too, folks. But you know what? You didn't notice it because you were so caught up in what you saw as a child. That's why. Because the nostalgia factor played so heavily, you missed what that they were pretty much ripping off both A New Hope and Return of the Jedi in this movie. Did it bother me? No, not at all. I thought that what they did actually worked very nicely regarding the, the shield around, around, uh, Scarif. around Scarif. I thought it worked yeah. fine, so it didn't bother me. But the thing is, what did people say about The Force Awakens? Ah, the Star Hero is just like the Death Star. What a ripoff. I hate this movie. They did the exact same thing in this one. You just don't notice it because, oh, look, all the stuff I saw as a kid. I love that, I love that. Sorry, folks, it just, that does not work for me. So... That actually was an issue for me, as you know, the whole CGI thing. And by the way, part of my problem with what Jay brought up regarding the CGI, Star Wars is supposed to be known for advancing special effects and things like that. This looked like a massive step back. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. at, look at K2SO. His CGI was Great. phenomenal. Yeah, and the thing is, when I see Targon walking around, I'm like, 
this doesn't even look realistic. It looks like they're talking to somebody that's not there, and that really took me out of the film. I've heard the term Uncanny Valley thrown around. Yeah. Now, this is one thing where a lot of people, I think, are giving us a free pass, and I don't think it deserves one. And by this is another reason I still stand by my love for Jar Jar Binks. Deal with it. <laughs> uh, everyone is saying, oh, it doesn't matter if you couldn't invest much in the characters because it's a war movie. What does that have to do with anything? If the characters are going to die, again, spoilers, I want to care that they're dying. If, they're, if, they're, if you don't care, then why am I seeing the movie? I mean, truth be told, everything that happened in this movie, they basically summed up in a line and a half in A New Hope. Give me a reason to care more about it. This movie didn't do that. Instead, oh, we just have some characters die. <laughs> Good! Yeah. Great to know. Yeah, Why should me, I care? Make me care about Oh, the... and by the way, regarding that scene where you got a brief glimpse of C-3PO, first of all, sorry Jason, he pissed me off again <laughs> for a brief second. <laughs> then you get to the main antagonist of the film. I hate to say this about Krennic, but basically, they kind of crapped on him the entire movie. Lord Vader doesn't take him seriously. Oh, Grand Moff Tarkin doesn't take him seriously. They're basically saying, people, you shouldn't even care about this character. He's basically disposable. So why have? then. I mean, all he was the entire time was just a suck-up with delusions of grandeur. That's all he really was. I mean, if you're not going to give him people any reason to care, then why are we paying the ticket price? I want to care. And one other thing I'd like to mention, by the way. People keep saying, oh, well, this movie is basically just takes place in the Star Wars movie. There's no, it's, it's its own story. No, it isn't. It directly connects episode three and four. How is this? I mean, when you flat out see them giving the information to Leia, guess what? That's technically directly part of it, okay? I'm sorry. I don't see it as this, uh, as this, uh, story that it's its own thing. No, it's not. It's not. And the sad thing with me is, like I said, I love The Force Awakens. This one, it was okay, but, uh... But the thing is, I think it was more nostalgia-driven than anything else, and, uh, so I can't rate this even close to as highly as The Force Awakens. Sorry, folks, I can't. I, I agree with him. It is nostalgia-driven, it? but it's got a billion dollars it's about <laughs> sold, too. But a lot of that is, you know, the nostalgia factor, and, yeah. and, and like I said, I like this a little bit more than you guys, and I, I can understand your, your whole thing about it. I, I do get that, and... If the, like I said, my, my biggest problem was the jumping around a lot. And another thing, okay, and I'm not saying this to be smart or anything, they they named each planet. Yeah. They yeah. Put their, the their one orders. planet they didn't name was what? Mustafar. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, someone exactly. who's never watched Star Wars before, they, want to know. they would like to know, I mean, I know what planet yeah. it was. You get a little bit of death of the, with Vader's castle, Castle Bast, I, I believe it's mm -hmm. its name. Okay. Um... Where it is located in Mustafar is interesting. Did you read up on it's, that? It's basically... It's it, overlooking the, the spot the, where him and Obi-Wan fought and where yeah. he got his arms and legs, legs cut off. off. Mm. And, and it's... Yep. The, 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 they said the, the, the window is right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where the bow... Where the, and where that bow it's place, interesting yeah. because that's where he lost his humanity. Yep, yep. And, that's why and it's, it's why. a constant reminder of the, 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 the pain and, suffering. and anger and suffering. So it makes you, you know, they, they can see, like, how Vader f probably felt, I mean, that was probably when he was most powerful was in that castle. Yeah. Because that's mm. where it was feeding his yeah, dark that's side. That's where he has his rejuvenation yeah. chamber. He had his rejuvenation chamber. Mm. Now, I'm going to ask you guys about that scene. What did you think of the scene about him in the back to take? I actually enjoyed that scene personally. Did you? I did like okay. it. I did like it. And, of course, another... I, I I don't know the actor who played Darth Vader. Spencer in, in the, something. Spence, yeah. yeah, in the suit and probably the one we saw in the in the tank, but in the. Generation. It was interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I knew the scene was there, but they didn't show exactly what was going. On. They just showed the guy in the cloak figure in the trailer. Yeah. Um, and when I seen it, I went, "Whoa!" I mean, because I wasn't expecting it. Well, that was and, like, it was interesting. That's a, that's another point too. In the trailer, <clears throat> there was. I mean, I think they do this in a lot of trailers. They, there was the, a lot of the, the lot was in the trailer that was wasn't in the movie. In the yeah, movie, but I think they it. do it with a lot of trailers because it's to get the audience invested in the movie. But there's like this one scene where yeah. Crank's talking and where he says one line like the the power we have is so incredible. And then there's another scene on Scarif where actually uh, Jin is running with the, like, it looks like a hard drive case, or so, like a little computer where she has with, Ca with, case, with Cassian fighter. to get to, 
Oh, the Tie Fighter on yeah. top of on top yeah. of yeah, but, there, but there's a scene where she's running in the desert, running from the the troopers yeah, yeah. with Cassie and with the plan. So there's a lot of stuff that kind of either gets caught, which which we see in a lot of trailers. But I think Rogue One was really eminent to that because there was a lot of stuff. Like I actually watched a video uh, that showed a lot of stuff that was cut, and I'm not saying we might get deleted scenes later on when the movie comes out on on you know on. On DVD, Blu-ray, whatever, but um, but let's 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 talk about Jin and Cassian, and okay. and and one big thing I think is about Galen's death. I felt it was very it it just it wasn't good. I mean, he he died, and it's like it's like it wasn't there was no empathy there. It, no, it was nothing. It was like it's like oh, I'm dying. It wasn't like when you saw. Here's a here's an extreme example which I saw recently, when the beast dies in Beauty and the Beast. That scene is so, like, yeah. empathetic. It's like even Russell, you, you it tear me because they make you invested in exactly, the character. Exactly, there exactly. is no investment in these exactly. characters. Exactly, like I watched that scene recently and I was tearing up. I was like. The beast is that you know, you know he, you know well, the curse was broken, but it's like you don't know if he's gonna like if he's gonna yeah. go if that curse was broken from to to bring it back to Star Wars itself. Yeah. I mean, Force Awakens when Han died, yeah. you know you you really felt for Han. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Uh, because we know we know who he is. We I got felt to know it. him. I had two yeah, tears had just tears running it. down my face. I mean, yeah. it was exactly. You don't you don't me. feel that for too many of these characters. For re some reason, I felt it for K two S. So yeah, he was the only one yeah, I did. Yeah, 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 I felt one. bad for his his. Other than that, and, and, I... and, and Baze and and Chirrut, like those are the only characters I felt you know I felt bad for when Brody was blown up in the spaceship in the in the in the in the in the Imperial. Um, what was it? The yeah, it was an Imperial transport. That they he blew up is like oh, who cares, um, <laughs> and when Jin and when Jin and Cassian died on that beach, I'm like yeah, they, and they hold hands, they hold, they, I, they didn't even they, you would think they were gonna kiss or something, but that didn't even happen. I, 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 they, like, they didn't they didn't earn that kiss. Was, they didn't really make a relationship yeah. there. That's so essentially like well like I said earlier. I mean I understand they're all gonna die, but. Make us care that they're gonna die. Yeah, they Make us get us invested in the characters. If you're not gonna do that, why am I paying the no money to see the movie? They didn't build up their. They didn't build up the character. They didn't. There was no character <laughs> development in within these. Characters. I got a point here. As soon as he's done. Okay, but, go ahead. Well, and I think I've discussed this with you guys or one time or another. Um, like again, I see all your guys' points on this. I, I said I like this a little bit better than you, just because I'm a Star Wars nut. Um, but. In all fairness, what was this movie really intended to do? This was the appetizer for the real one that comes yeah, out it's coming yeah. in December. Yeah. This is to make everybody remind, oh, Star Wars is coming out December yeah. of 2017. Um, it's like, when The Force Awakens comes out, we're all, like, I was counting down. Like, I, can't, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I started counting down. I was excited. Oh, my God, only one more month to Star Wars. You know, and then, and then I watched it three times in the theater. <laughs> Wow. And it was like, okay, episode 18, I can't, or episode 18, <laughs> episode 8, I can't One wait. One day, yeah. Um, episode 8, I can't wait, because you know that last scene in The Force Awakens where she's just handing, the, you know, yeah. and and then, of course, they a couple months later, episode 8 start, or started production, and what did they show? The same scene where she's handing the lights. You know, this was an appetizer for episode 8. Mm -hmm. That's all it really was, and I, it made money. I mean, it's it's almost I a just billion hope, dollars, I just, guys. I just hope we. I just hope with Han so the Han Solo movie coming out in twenty eighteen, I hope it's going to be more than an appetizer because I know well, Woody. I know Woody Harrelson's going to be this guy announced to be his mentor, which I'm hoping, which I, which I'm excited for because I like Woody Harrelson. Well, I think the thing is with a Han movie. We all know who he is, so so it's gonna be more of an impact. Now, now let me just say one more thing about about Row One. I saw it twice. I saw it actually back to back night. Uh, I saw it the first time, and I went in with a nostalgia look of it, um, knowing I was excited for it because I, you know, I like the original trilogy, um, and I saw the original trilogy back in 20, um, 2015 before um, before uh, Episode Seven came out. 
and I enjoyed it. And I think I went, I think, and I think a lot of us went into it with a nostalgia look at it. Um, and I was excited for Rogue One. I, I was like pumped for it. And when I saw it the first time, I enjoyed it. But then when I then when when Tony and Russell were talking <laughs> about it after we, we saw were it, for you. <laughs> they were trying to root for me. But then I saw it the next day. And I saw all the problems. I saw yeah. everything they were they were talking about how how it you know. So it didn't hold up for it you. It didn't hold up the second time around. I'm not saying it was a. It's still a Star Wars movie. I'm not gonna say it's the worst Star Wars movie, but it's just it was mediocre, and I just think there was a lot of things that needed to be improved. And hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully now we have Episode Eight coming out this year, and it's. it's it's uh, very exciting. Uh, well, I just want to say a few things like uh, the, the director, I, I know, I can't think of his name right now, but he's the same director that did Godzilla. Oh, um, yeah. And I hated that movie. Gareth Edwards, I want yeah. to say. So this movie, I can see, it, I like it better than Godzilla, but I can see some of the same problems that I had in Godzilla. So I'm like, this, is, this guy is on my radar now to stay away from him. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't like his direction. But anyway... Like in this movie, I was I was starting to fall asleep. Quite yeah. frankly, I mean, I don't know if that's just because I was getting tired or stuff or, or something like that. But it I wasn't, or I was getting bored. But yeah, I was just I was starting to fall asleep because the, the the middle and the beginning was kind of boring, um, and uh, and the Darth Vader scene. Uh, I wanted to bring that up because I I I have mixed feelings on mm -hmm. that one mm -hmm. because. I liked it. I when Darth Vader he, he almost he like he turned into Jason Voorhees and it became a horror movie there for mm -hmm. a second there. I I loved that. It was nice. It was tense. You you saw the uh, Vader use his powers and stuff like that. But the thing was, then we get to Episode Four and it's like, how come he's not doing that and then this or how come he's not throwing people around with the Force and stabbing people with the lightsaber until and stuff until like until until like Episode Five where he fights you know Luke you know yeah so, yeah so so it's exactly. like exactly they kind of like what happened so that so uh, it's cool but it's like it doesn't match up well, I want to go back to the real quick to, about the the CGI on Tarkin and and Leia <laughs> okay. Um, well, I was gonna say you liked Leia more, better than Tarkin. No, and he, I, she, he hated no, Leia more than Leia. Leia. Oh, okay, okay. But but I but I like Leia better than Tarkin. But I think that the reason is is because it was so short with yeah. Leia. Whereas Tarkin, the, he had like at least five six scenes. Ten minutes. Of but, but, but and but, and, and, and like so said, nine minutes too long. I, it, yeah, it, if I wouldn't have no problem with either one if they were just short. Like Leia was. Let's get her final <laughs> grades. We'll start with the J here. Um, like I said, Jeez. I like this movie better than these three guys. Yeah. Um, and Russ, when I hear him talk about it, I just I'm glad he isn't my motivational speaker. <laughs> anyway, um, I think everyone is. <laughs> I'm sorry, Russ. I just no, it's true. It. You're right. I'm not gonna die. <laughs> um, again, I'm a Star Wars fan. I enjoyed the movie as a fan. Um, the nostalgia factor was probably the major reason. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I had did find a few things like the moving from planet to planet and a few other things. The CG, I mean, it didn't bother me so much because I didn't, I wasn't expecting it to begin with. And when it happened, mm -hmm. I was kind of like, oh, cool, it's Tarkin. Oh, oh cool, it's Leia. Yeah. That's how I approached it. I really didn't look at it as like, well, that don't look like her. <laughs> you know, I didn't look at it like that. So, yeah. um, you know, do I think it's as good as The Force Awakens? No. No. no, I heard some people say that they thought it was, and I just said, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> this um, is the greatest movie of all time. Yeah, and I I did enjoy it, and the battle scenes were fantastic. Um, oh, yeah. The scarif, all the scarif scenes were great. Yes. Um, it, it, oh, another thing you guys didn't talk about. We we find out why Luke is uh, Red Five in Episode Four. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, cause Red Five bought it in in this movie. Yeah. Uh, the original he, Red Five. Yeah, he, 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 um, he but off. in all fairness, you know, as far as Star Wars movies go, was, um, my least favorite of the Star Wars series was probably Attack of the Clones. I'll go. I'll agree with I, you. 100%. I didn't care for that one as much as like Episode One. I kind of it was okay. Episode Three was the best out of the, the first yeah. three. I'm gonna disagree there. Yeah. Well, is this movie in with those? No. I. I I don't think it. I, I wouldn't call it a standalone movie. I would call it 
a movie. Well, you could call it that, but I call it a movie that's an in, it, it's uh, explaining a time frame. Yeah. Um, you know, it was interesting to see how they got the Death Star plans because I know they talked about it in the other movies. Mm -hmm. Um, and all that, you know, and with the little problems, I, I'm not going to give this movie an A. No. Um, I'm more along the B minus range just because I did enjoy it for the nostalgia factor and it being star during the Star Wars timeline. Yes. Then bumping into those guys that Luke and Obi Wan eventually bumped into on uh, Mos Eisley. Yeah. Uh, they were in it as well. Um, oh yeah, they did talk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, Bal, Bal did talk about Obi Wan. Yes, that is true. And you know, and but in all fairness, I, I'm going to probably give this movie a B minus just because I enjoyed it as a Star Wars fan. Um, like I said, it's not an A. There's a there were some problems with it. Um, it's it's not the great of uh, the Force Awakens, or, or <laughs> any of the other Star Wars movies. But uh, I did enjoy it. Like I said, from the nostalgia factor, I only watched it once. I enjoyed it. Like I said, the CG didn't bother me as much as it bothered you guys. I was kind of like, oh, that's cool, because I wasn't expecting it. I gave it a B minus. Let's see. Um, it was okay. The movie was okay. It was av it was average. I said it's not the worst. It's not. It's a, it's far from the best Star Wars movie, which I feel like the best Star Wars movie is uh, Force Awakens. Um, like I said, it was just like I said. I enjoyed it the first time I watched it, which is okay. But like I said, I felt it was through a nostalgic eyes, and but I'm very thankful I watched it the second time, where I got to nitpick it a lot more. <laughs> I will give it this: music, excellent soundtrack. Or score soundtrack is it excellent. The time frame it took place right before episode, right before right before New Hope, they got that proper with you know how everything looked. Um, the AT ACT Walker units in the movie, which is the predecessor to the ATATs, uh, their carrier transports were very well done. I, I enjoyed those. That was actually one thing I enjoyed because the ATAT Walkers or ADATs, whatever you want to call them. Is my favorite vehicle in the whole Star Wars universe. So, oh, the S the ATSTs are, are my second favorite. Those are the ones on the two legs, which were in um, Episode Six. I love those two. So those 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 are K two S O or K two S O. Uh, yeah, he he he. he 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 could he was actually. Hey, what's your grade? <laughs> well, Jason's on for a while about. But of course, there was all the negativities. Of course, the two main leads being flat. Um, Jin and Cassian. I don't even know why they were in the movie. Because um, all the other the supporting the supporting actors were very well done. Oh, Saw Guerrera, another character we forgot to mention. He was from the Clone Wars, uh, and he was in recently in a couple episodes of the Rebels. Uh, I enjoyed his character. Uh, Forrest Whitaker played him very well. Um, he played him on Rebels, too. Yes, he played the voice on Rebels. Um, like I said, the movie was average. So, I'm like I said, I'm going to have to give this movie a solid C. Yeah, C. Not, uh, Russell? Yeah. <laughs> Get ready for this, folks, because you're not going to believe I'm saying this, but... My grade, despite a very different perspective, is the same as Jason's, a B minus. Wow. wow. Because, despite the fact that I, and, and you gotta consider, my grade for The Force Awakens was an A, so that's still a massive downgrade, which is very unfortunate. What I thought they got right, they got really right. And a lot of the things that people, again, complained about in The Force Awakens, I thought I was fine with. So, I understand they ripped off a lot of stuff from, uh, from, uh, a New Hope and Return of the Jedi, but it didn't bother me. I thought it was done fine here and everything. And K2SO and uh, Donnie Yen's character, I, deal with the J, I'm not going to remember. And his partner, <laughs> uh, you know, I like them. So, I I mean, I think the uh, the good did counter out, counter out the bad a bit more, but is it something that I'd watch regularly? Uh, no, not a chance. To be perfectly fair, in the entire spectrum of Star Wars movies, I kind of put it in the middle area, to be perfectly honest. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. I'm right with you on that. Okay, uh, for me, well, one other thing I would like to mention uh, that I don't think that never, nobody this movie brought movie up This movie is going to be like an hour long. <laughs> was that, uh, um, I can't see, that's the thing, I can't even remember the, not too many of the characters' names. 
because I didn't like too many of them. But uh, uh, K Case Caspian, I think his name was Caspian. 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 Uh, there's a scene in here where he's talking to one of his friends, and he's like, his friend's like, I can't, I can't make it. I, my leg's broken or my arm's broken or whatever. And, and Cassian, well, all right, you're gone. And he shoots him. So I'm like, I was like, okay. well, I see the point in it. I'm just like, mm. I'm supposed to like this character yeah. who's who who's just so killing somebody, so trigger happy, which is one of one, one of his guys, and he was trying to kill. Generous father for no reason. I mean, the Death Star was already built. What what good would killing him do? I I, I wasn't it already built before. Yes. Yeah. yeah so they so it's like, but anyway, to get off. <laughs> so uh, so I didn't care too much for the Maybe characters. Too trigger happy. Yeah, I I, I thought it was kind of boring. Uh, uh, like uh, the villain, like you, which I can't Krennic. remember. Critic. I didn't like him. I thought he was a weak villain. Um. And and he shouldn't even have that title. Yeah, I I think that the the <laughs> the, the, the tone is way off from a Star Wars movie to me. I think it's a lot a lot darker. Some people might like that. And I was just thinking the other day. I was like to myself, would I even buy bothering bother buying this on DVD or Blu-ray? And I'm like, maybe not. I you know I I for for people out there you can skip this in my opinion mm -hmm. you could this you could you should have been skipped you, yeah. you i mean you could because i mean you, you don't need it to uh, to enjoy the other movies it, it, you you know it's part of the other story right but it, you know we have already we know what happens we it, so it's like it was a very uh, kind of unnecessary movie i felt mm -hmm. just watch rebels <laughs> so <laughs> for for me, I I'm gonna be the you know the Debbie Downer on this one as usual, uh, so <laughs> yeah. I, I'm gonna have to give this one a, a C minus, and, and that's oh. my final grade. Right. So, any other final thoughts? So that's about it. So nope. I'm Tony Beers, Jason Case, J Ross, and we'll see you next time. For more Toxic Pop, visit our website at toxicpop1.wixsite.com slash toxicpop. Email us at toxicpop1 at gmail.com. And check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash toxicpop1 and Instagram at instagram.com slash wearetoxicpop. Links are in the description. This video is sponsored by the Crazy Kings of Toys. Check them out for all your toy needs and find out why they are so crazy. Find them on eBay, Bricklink, and Facebook. Links are in the description.